ice hockey, the Toronto Raccoons curling club, and my sister has a tail? Hello guys, my name is SVB and we're here for a map guide for Overwatch 2's first new map, New Queen Street, aka the Toronto map. We're going to run through the entire map, talking about all the routes and spots that you need to know to play this map, as well as some of the tips from my end on where you should fight and how you can make a big impact with just the right angle of approach. So let's get to it. So as you can hopefully see from this vantage point, one of the key characteristics of the push mode is that the map will always snake and mirror one side to the other. So if you understand how to attack on one side, you understand how to attack on the other. And if you understand how to defend on one side, you understand how to defend on the other. So for that reason, we're going to start at one spawn. We're going to go from there all the way down to the center here. Then I'm going to pause. I'm going to talk a lot about the center because this is where the majority of the fights will take place. The center of this map where our robot, the push payload robot, finds himself is where the majority of your fights will take place. So it's really important that we understand this area. We get a really thorough breakdown of what fights are good in this area and what fights aren't. But for the ease of simplicity, we do want to go from one side to the other. So we're going to start on the spawn of the Toronto Raccoons, as it's called. And we're going to push all the way to the other side. We'll talk from a defending perspective. And then we'll talk from an attacking perspective. So let's go like this. So starting from the spawn room of this team, there's really two and maybe three major areas that you really need to focus on. First and foremost, obviously, this is where the push bot is going to come from. So this is the perspective that the attackers are going to have coming towards your spawn. Now, obviously, you're in a little bit of trouble if they've already made it this far. But the main thing you need to worry about is can you control the off angles? One of the biggest characteristics of all these push maps is that there's a ton of off angles that you need to worry about. So this is the main angle and here's the off angles that you need to worry about. First, the most obvious one is through this little window, this little bridge area, which we might call the library. So in the library, you have a little mini that you can use to sustain. And as you can see, it has a great vantage point from the rest of the push pathway. So you can see quite a lot of angles here. And if you get someone with decent range, you can stand up here and be a lot of trouble. And like I said, if the push payload is over here, then you have a decent angle to try and shoot from here or use it as a flank attack, get over the top, come through here, get into the back line and fight like this. So that's the first and most significant, probably high ground flank area that you need to worry about. The next one is what we would call a really wide flank. This is the furthest away from the push payload. And this one takes a little bit of time. It goes through a mini, but again, eventually will come to the back of the enemy team. So this is the flank you would take if perhaps your team is already resetting. And if you feel like you have the luxury of time to come around for the long flank and get in there and eventually in the end, the benefit of this flank obviously is that it would be the least likely for you to be spotted if you take this longer route. Now there's also a third flank or a third route that we can go for. This one's a little bit crowded and it involves going past the edge of the map. And as you can see here, there's another mini. So another feature of this is all these flanks have some sort of self-protection, a mini or a mega to heal yourself up. But as you can see, this flank doesn't really provide a lot of great angles. So this flank isn't really worthwhile too much. You can go a little bit deeper with this flank because there's this nice little tunnel area. And actually there's a secret little club here that you'll probably never fight inside. This reminds me a lot of the Junkertown nightclub that you have underneath as well. The bar in Junkertown, which is a very beautiful area, but no one's ever really going to fight in here. So we have this underground area and eventually this flank comes all the way around here. Now this spot is a pretty nice one. So if you were to take that flank and come all the way around here, you might find some decent angles and there's some decent natural cover here as well. Again, another feature of all these new maps in Overwatch 2 is there's lots of little pieces of natural cover that you can find yourself behind. Even in this little screenshot you can see here, you can hide behind this bus station, you can hide behind this advertisement, you can get in the building here, there's a, even this little vending machine for cover. There's the gym here, the Warbirds gym with a very interesting icon. So lots of little nooks and crannies for you to always hide behind, which is great to see as a feature of Overwatch 2. So if you do take that flank, you come around here, you might again find a decent angle, but it is quite a long flank. Uh, unlike the other one though, the benefit of this one is that it's completely covered. So you would be very, very stealthy coming through here. There is a chance that you get spotted on the cross from here. If there's an attacker, they may spot you going through. So do worry about that. Otherwise, this flank is pretty good and it can come around to a pretty dangerous area. And again, there's a mini health pack over here that you can use. Now, that is the immediate push vicinity. Let's say you're defending and you manage to push the attackers back past this little area. Okay, and this 
is a checkpoint. So one thing to note about the push mode is that the bot can be taken to checkpoints. So for the time being, let's say that the enemy team has gotten that checkpoint and they're fighting in the area just afterwards or you're just trying to stop the checkpoint and reflip it and push the bot back the other way. What kind of fights are you going to want to take? Well, now again, we have a couple flank routes. The first flank route is on this right hand side that you can see. Again, very quick, very easy and very quickly gets you into the back line of the enemy team. So again, a feature of the Toronto map or the new Queen Street as it's called and a lot of the Overwatch 2 maps is that they're very flanker friendly. So if you're somebody who likes to flank a lot on any hero or if you like to play particularly flanking DPS, you're going to love these maps. You can have a lot of time. And I think for any player playing in a game of Overwatch 2, you're going to feel like you can make a lot of impact on yourself because you can get into the back line very easily. Not only are there one less tank to block you, but there's more pathways for you to circumvent the tanks anyways. So there's that flank on the right. Once more, we have this little high ground perch. Now, not so much of a flank as much as a power position, right? If you can get a hit scan up here or anyone with decent range, they have a little mini to heal themselves. They have a decent amount of cover. If they're under pressure, they can peek behind cover for a minute peek back out so again if you're a hit scan player if you're someone who plays characters with range this is a great spot to find yourself and you can put a lot of damage out and if the enemy team doesn't have someone with verticality they won't be able to contest you now looking back at the wider area of the map there are a couple more things to note there's this little room here which isn't super useful but again it has enough nooks and crannies that if you were to find yourself in this position you can use it to fight from but again, the significant part is what we would call the wide flank on the left here by the mini, by this little pumping nightclub that we can never get access to. Sadly, we were not invited. You can once more find yourself into the enemy backline straight away. So that from spawn, as you can see, pretty easy to get to. You come through spawn, you go straight left, and immediately you can find yourselves in the enemy backline. So nice little flank route. And finally, there's another little detour which isn't so much as a flank as like i said a little detour a little alternate route which is through the warbirds gym again there's a little mini here you can use it to help yourself top yourself back up and then get into the enemy team from an alternate angle because obviously running it straight down the road is not always going to be best so to summarize there's these three major paths coming out of the spawn of this side of the map the first is the nightclub route with the mini so this is the wide flank as we've called it but again i think nightclub is a helpful term this is the library route as we can see here this is the one that provides you with the high ground this is great if you are someone with range the left side flank is great if you're someone like a sombra who can control this mini health pack and use it as a launching pad to keep fighting from here and again this might be good if you're a character who's maybe not so subtle not so good at hiding it's a very unlikely route that you'll be spotted from so if you if you're fearful that you'll get spotted this is a very good route to take and then finally we have what we would call the ice rink flank so this is on the far side and the reason we might call it the ice rink flank is that there is indeed this giant ice rink on the right hand side with the subway and before you try it in your game no you cannot make it over there you will die if you jump off this part of the map and again viable to get through through this underground passage and once you get through that passage again it opens up this little flank for when the payload is being pushed to the checkpoint the library still remains a power position for anyone with range and the nightclub flank remains a good flank option. So two very vi viable wide flank options and one really good high ground for this part of the map. Now, like I said, the Warbirds gym is one place you will find yourself fighting in a lot because obviously this is where the cart wants to go. This is where the majority of the enemy team will be. So you're going to want to use this because not least does it provide this alternate door, but it has a nice little ledge as well. So there's a little high ground purse that you can use Let's say the push bot is taking its way around this bend and it's just about to reach that checkpoint. The Warbirds gym will offer you that nice little vantage point. Again, if you're someone with range and you want to punish anyone on the enemy team who doesn't have verticality, who can't contest you, can't get up there easily, then you just sit up top here. You start peppering their back line. If in trouble, you can run away here. There's the mini you can grab. And once more, you can come down main and fight with the rest of your team if you so choose. Now, the nightclub flank is still very viable because it'll lead you in to what we will find here, which is the TMT, the Toronto Museum of Technology, which has a lovely mega health pack. Again, if you're someone like a Sombra, really powerful to control this mega health pack. And again, as a flanker, if you're not going to get healed for your teammates, grab the mega and again, in you go back into the back line. So a very nice flank route as well. Now, 
that little pathway is now a lot longer if the payload is pushing towards the checkpoint if the bot the robot is pushing towards the checkpoint so this is what we might now call the wide flank with the graffiti we'll call it the graffiti flank quite far away from the checkpoint but again worthwhile if you really want to take your time maybe you're waiting for your team to reset you can take that time to come around here watch you could even pick off an enemy teammate who's coming back from their spawn and eventually get in when it's time now once we get past this checkpoint we have the main area we're going to call this the bus area for there's these two buses here on either side and this little bus station type place on the top this is where the majority of your fights will take place on new queen street this is where the majority of the action takes place by this little ice hockey statue of some sort of legendary omnic hockey skater figure so what is the important things that we need to know about this section of the map and what is going to win you the fights in this area first and most importantly let's just establish where the bot starts so the bot starts here in any given fight and here are the two little pillars that he will push from one side to the other so still playing from the perspective of the team starting from this side if you come here and both teams remember will reach this point at the same time the power play areas are again this high ground right this high ground as you can see has a lot of great windows and natural cover this high ground offers you a lot of power positions it allows you good vantage point it allows you if you're let's say a genji you can climb up top drop down straight into the back line it's something that even a farah can play off of now note that farah can't stand on the top of this but she can use this as nice little bits of cover she can peek over the top and shoot she can drop into the window and shoot again any of these flanking type characters hanzo We'll want to be up here we'll want to use this position if you can get up here a soldier that would be great as well now how can you get up there if you don't have verticality again you can use the tmt flank so let's say there is an annoying flanker up there and you don't have any verticality well you can run up all the way from here get into their face from this angle or you can use the ice ring side but again this is the less advisable side because it is a little bit more exposed they will see you coming from the Tom Beanson side flank. So they will see you coming. So it's a little bit more exposed. So this is the major area you'll want to control. But actually one of the nice things about the new Queen Street map. Is that even if you don't control the area. There's lots of little bits of elevation that you can use. And lots of little bit of cover. So this bus for example. Is really nice in a way. Because you can use either side of it. You can fight on one side. You can jump over the top. Depending on the kind of character you are. You can fight on the other side. So it's both protected and not protected. Depending on who's fighting on top of it. So, again, as a theme that you've already seen, characters with mobility, characters who can get around the map fast are really going to thrive in Overwatch 2. So I really recommend, guys, that those are the kind of characters you pick in this kind of map in particular because there's so much verticality for you to use. You can hop on here, then up onto here. You can use this. If someone's hiding in this cover over here, you can pop up over the top. Hello. Start peppering them with whatever ammo you have. Or you can drop down, play this as cover, play this as cover. This little pillar here. All lots of bits to cover that the high ground actually makes a little bit useless. So make sure you try and take as much high ground as you can. Fighting through this choke point, as you can see, isn't really ideal because there's lots of little nooks and crannies for people to hide. Let's say you're someone with range damage, right? Let's say you're someone like a Roadhog or you're someone like a Cassidy. If you play here, as you see, you'll find lots of angles for the enemy team to hide from you, right? They can hide behind that box that you're going to push with the bot. You can hide behind this nook and cranny. They can even use these little items to juke you, right? If there's a Roadhog hook, they can use that lamp to juke you. They can hide behind the bus. They can hide back up this flank. They can hide in this window. So lots of areas for them to juke you. So while you will sometimes need to sit down here, again, try and get yourselves up here as often and frequently as you can because this is where you're going to unlock the point. This is where you're going to get the kills. And again, even if you don't sit up here, just use it to get over the top. Now, one final thing I want to point out about this little area here is this pathway too. This is another pathway that's going to be very important because the robot is here and everyone's attention is going to be here. And that's when you use this little flank angle to get straight into the back line like this. Right, again, if the people are fighting over there, you sneak around through here, straight into the back line. Right? If you can't access this high ground, here's a little more of a direct route running straight into the back line. To get onto the targets that are squishy the ones you really want to be fighting with these giga chad or watch two tanks who will have a lot of hp and a lot of resources they will take a long time to gun down you as an individual probably want to pick off the targets with 200 hp or thereabouts because they're the ones you're going to finish quickly and they're the ones that are going to die so from this point on basically the map snakes so you having explained one side the same principles apply 
but rather than a defending perspective let's look at it from an attacking perspective now so let's say you want to push this little pillar further down the map again similar kind of principles apply you want to make sure nobody gets into your backline from this angle from this angle which is no longer the gym but now the optical cybernetics shop and again this wide flank probably don't have to worry about too much right it takes a long time to come from the ice rink all the way into here so you don't have to worry too much keep one eye out but this is the main flank you want to control because this has a direct route straight to the spawn which leads to the toronto union station so watch this flank because this is one that someone running out of spawn is going to go straight from here straight into your back line watch the optical cybernetic shop because like the warbirds gym on the other side it offers you this little window to hop in and start hitting the back line from and again watch the nightclub flank because it's that same idea they come out of spawn they walk through here they get the nightclub flank and already they're accessing that checkpoint area so as an attacker make sure you control those flanks it's going to be less about you flanking here because they're going to come probably from their spawn side from a multitude of angles so you just want to make sure you don't let them get the drop on you while your team concentrates on pushing the robot out here but if you sense an opportunity don't be afraid to go take that little flank take that opportunity to find someone coming back from spawn pick them off and off you go now again this isn't the library but the hotel monte bianco on this side same high ground principle right there's a mini here little ledge you're going to want to control this ledge you're going to make sure that none of them get control of this ledge as you're pushing the cart as you're attacking make sure someone is capable of contesting that window because if you get a Widowmaker up there a Hanzo up there and your team is sat up here you're really going to suffer you're really going to feel the punishment of that long range damage even an Ana or Zenyatta up there can really do a lot that's a perfect spot for Ana to land nades from so obviously if you're those kind of characters you want to get up there and you want to stop from the attacking perspective anyone from the enemy team getting up there themselves now again the egg house is similar to that little club area where it's a nice lovely little area actually really really beautiful and one of the details that i really appreciate about this map in particular very cool very quirky very cutesy but again not an area you're going to find yourself fighting in too much it just leads to that same parallel flank from the spawn side which comes out here behind the bus station so just controlling these flanks, knowing these flanks is the entirety of the game on New Queen Street because you're going to want to push it down. You're going to want to get up here. You're going to want to get your cart here. And you're going to want someone making sure that no one comes around the left hand, the nightclub side. And then once you get to this area, you've probably already won the map. If you've gotten the push payload to this far up, you probably already won the map. Just want to make sure you control these power play spots, control this high ground, use the cover. You can use the bus station for a little bit of cover and stage from here. And again, you can use this room with the mega health pack. It's the same on the other side. You can use this room, grab people as they're coming out of spawn, try and catch them one by one while they're staggering. And once you do that, it shouldn't be long before you push the payload all the way, confirm the victory even before the time runs out and grab yourself the dub. If you've enjoyed this map guide, then please do subscribe and stay tuned for more map guides and educational content as Overwatch 2 grows and more content is released and we all have the chance to learn new things. If you're a returning player, you may want to re-familiarize yourself with the game by watching some of my other guide content and I'll be releasing a lot more videos in the future to bring everyone up to speed and make sure we can all enjoy Overwatch 2 to the fullest. If there's anything in particular you'd like to see, do drop it in the comment section below and I will do my best to make it happen. Before I go, I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons who do the awesome job of supporting me. And if you'd like to support me directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. So follow the link in the video description and consider signing up to get loyalty rewards like VOD reviews. That's it from me. I'll be back before you know it with another video. See you soon.